A very uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where or when you're listening to uh, episode <laughs> number six of Hands and Heels Champions Day this weekend at Flemington. And we've got plenty of uh, Group 1 harness meetings to get through as well this weekend. Paul Sebastiani, Vince Lochisana is with us. Uh, hello, Vince. How are you, mate? Mate, I'm not too bad, Paul. Uh, we've survived the spring carnival so far. and <laughs> We're still breathing. Uh, not, not that many of our tips have come through in the last five days, but uh, uh, it's been just pretty hard. Uh, just Sulcum in the Melbourne Cup. I'm just still vomiting over it. I was and, just going to say, missed uh, the start again, Sulcum. I mean, otherwise, uh, how much does it win by? Oh, uh, no. And then he got held up for runs pretty much the entire straight until the last 200 metres. And when he saw daylight, he flashed home. But anyway, that's the nature is he, of the is beast. He, is, he the, um, is he the... the the stayers version of Chautauqua, or <laughs> it's close to it. <laughs> that thing could never it's leave the stalls, could it? I know, uh, close to it, but uh, yeah. that's that's the nature of the beast, as we say. So it is. Um, well done. But to uh, we saw J Mac salute yeah. on both the yeah. uh, the favourite of the Derby, um, Riff Rocket, and yep. uh, and also yesterday at the Oaks with um, with um, Zardozzi. Zardozzi, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, yeah. even though he hasn't had the most prolific spring carnival, he's still come good in the big ones, hasn't he? Exactly right. He's a big time jockey. Uh, he's got a couple of rides this weekend that are pretty uh, that are pretty important to the punters in the card at Flemington, which is going to be a very interesting one. It's Champions Day at uh, Flemington, and we should also yeah. um, recognise the fantastic uh, win uh, by um, Mark Zara on um, on the favourite there, of course, yeah, without we- a fight. Exactly. Uh, not the favourite. It wasn't favourite, but it was second uh, elect, third um, elect, depending on where you shop. Third favourite, yeah. Yep. Um, first, first horse to do the double the Melbourne, Cup. Cup, yeah. Melbourne Cup double since Ethereal in two thousand and one. Correct. Is, yeah, uh, twenty two years seat. since it's last happened. Yeah, but so, uh, um, you, you've well got done. to admit that he's had the ideal preparation, and I thought that Gold yeah. Trip had, had had the ideal preparation as well. But as it turns out, I think the day was just too hot, and the weight was too much, and the the track was way too firm. Yeah. For some of those horses, and um, yep. uh, we we saw a couple of them, um, you know, really struggle to finish the trip. No doubt, yeah. Mm. Uh, without a fight, just loves the the good tracks. He loves tracks with uh, with uh, you know with with the least amount of water in them, and he just mm. he just loves getting on top of the ground. So um, yep. well done to him, and uh, well done to connections. So uh, we've got to move on pretty quickly though, because we can't really. Indeed. Worry about losing bets or worry about any of that. We've got to move no. on to find, find some more winners. So uh, we'll start with probably big day tomorrow. It is. It's a huge one. Yeah, Flemington. So we'll start. We'll go through the three Group Ones, yep. and they all come up as the first three legs of the quaddy. So we'll start with race number six, the Champion Sprint uh, yep. over twelve hundred meters, and this uh, bomb-proof New Zealand mare Imperatrice runs up the Flemington straight for the first time. She's a two-dollar favorite off these. Uh, of this trio of Mooney Valley wins, which were absolutely blistering. Uh, she they? showed, yeah, she showed real versatility as well. She was able to take cover and come from behind in her first two wins, this preparation. Yep. And then uh, in the Manicato, she led, jumped, and bolted in with a, um, with a, with a lead all the way victory, which was really impressive. So, oh, first wait. time up the straight, she's a $2 favorite. In Secret, who loves it up the straight, uh, is a $4 elect. And that's pretty much all the market is honing in on at the moment. The rest are all mm. double figures, which yep. is really intriguing. Uh, as Fora comes up for $12 elect and Bella Nipatina, who was really, really brave, uh, defeating Private Eye last start uh, in the Giga mm. Kick Stakes, which was fantastic to see her get back in the winners list. But uh, this is a very intriguing race, Vince. And I know we always speak about the straight, the Flemington straight, and the yeah. two dollar favourite. This is the first time she's raced up the straight, eh? She might be saying, Where, "Where's the turn?" I'm waiting for well, the that's turn. It. Well, so you just don't know. You just do not know. And and I think this is often it can often be fraught with danger. And look, based on what she's done, yeah. based on her ratings, based on her she numbers, picks herself based on that. She does pick herself, but I I just can't come into her at two dollars. Not at that just, price, yeah. I want I want to see. I want to see horses do it up the straight first before taking even money and what i find really interesting in this race is that if you look at her starting profile prices in similar races i'm talking group one weight for age yeah um, she started $1.65 in the moya and then she started $1.40 in the manicato now mm. you're getting two dollars so it seems to me that the bookies are pricing you to to let you on 
I think, which is, you know, it can be fraught with danger either ways for the bookies or punters. I was actually against her here. Uh, yep. Vince, just okay. purely because it's the straight for the first time. I know her straight yep. line speed is phenomenal, but I, I don't know. I'm just a bit if she if she'd already won the Flemington straight before uh, Flemington straight before. What odds do you think she'd be? Uh, odds on she'd be a dollar seventy, dollar sixty five, yeah. something like that. Yeah, because um, she's I got a picket fence next to her name at the moment, doesn't she? She does. She does. Look, I, I can't come into her, but. The one I can come into, I thought would start a little bit shorter, and I had her marked about the 350, 360 quote is in secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now the her seven. run in the Everest, oh, her run in the Everest was, oh, she was enormous, way too far back. She scooted home for fourth behind. Think yeah. about it. I wish I were in private eye, and that's that is the best sprinting form in Australia for mine. And I think Imperatrice has been. I mean, she hasn't really beaten much when you think about it. She's beaten Uncommon James, mm. Espora. And look, Roth Fire and Giga Kick, Giga Kick, we know is the Everest winner from last year, but he got injured in the run there. And uh, yeah. I, I, I honestly, I can't come into her at the price. I, I really like in secret here, Vince, and I'm going to be backing okay. her. All um, right. Race six, number seven. I think, I think she's a, worth worth a fantastic bet. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be with number seven, Vince. Very good, Paul. That yep. sounds James like logical, uh, logical gambling. Um, James McDonald. And, and there's got to be a reason why Imperatrice is being risked, risked at $2 with, with form like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And as it's you like say, it's, it's all, it's all based factor. on the, what it's has she beaten. It's the straight factor. Yeah. But it's also what has she beaten. So yep. now she comes up against one that's really, um, you know, mixed Fruit. it with the, with, the, with the big boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. No wonder it's a, it's a $4 second favourite. It's obviously yep. very, very capable. So. Yeah. You think it might be um, worth having a, a Quinella on those two, or um, or do you think there's um, something else that could come in? Nah, not a Quinella. I'd maybe do a boxed exacta, something like that. Is what how I would play because the Quinella is going to pay nothing. Um, yeah. the Quinella won't pay anything. But um, okay, and and it could. I, I'd almost be. I'd almost be laying Imperatrice the place. That's okay. what I'd be doing. If I'm against her here, I'm gonna. I'd lay her the place. But I, I'm just gonna back in secret just to keep it simple. The other yep. one I think can improve, and for those who want to maybe include this horse in multiples and exotics or anything like yep. that, Lofty Strike gets the blinkers back on. Did absolutely nothing last start in the okay. Caulfield Sprint. Was out the back in a slowly run race and drifted mm -hmm. like the North Breeze. And uh, he has a very nice record up the straight. There's Lofty Strike, and I think can run well um, at long, long okay. odds. I thought he was just a shade over the odds. Um, yeah, not 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 a real confident bet or anything like that, but something very small each way on the three Lofty Strike, who I think can really improve uh, in that uh, in this race. So, um, okay, seven the bet for me, and something very small on the three Lofty Strike. Are you going to follow me in with J-Mac? Well, I've been on J-Mac. <laughs> you know, the rotten, the rotten bugger. I, I, I backed him in every single race on Derby Day. And the only – Derby Day. I keep saying Derby Day. Um, <laughs> and he only won the Derby and that was it. And all the others, he'd come a guts of it. Um, yeah, he's been a bit uh, been, been a bit expensive for me. But um, I'll certainly I'll certainly be um, uh, more comfortable if I back yep. number seven in secret for the place. Um and then I've got, you know, three chances of getting my money rather than yeah. Imperatrice at probably what will be, you know, 180 to $2 for the win. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, it's a fair point, a fair argument too. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I'm with uh, seven in secret and something very small each way, Lofty Strike. Uh, let's move okay. on to it. This, this is probably the best race on the program, uh, the Champions Mile. Mr. No, Brightside, Bro seven. Alligator Blood, Fangirl, Victoria Road, all these horses come out of the Cox Plate. Yes. Mr. Brightside is our favourite at 250. Alligator Blood's there as well at 370. Fangirl was the initial favourite. She's now out to 290. And Victoria Road is uh, 20 to 1. Um, now, the race, see, I would have been all over Alligator Blood here, Vince. I would have absolutely launched Alligator Blood. But mm -hmm. this dirty, filthy thing down the bottom of the weights here, prior to Jenny, or not down the bottom of the weights, she, she's down mm. the bottom of number seven. She's going to take up the lead. Yeah, probably just mess things up for Alligator Blood, and he's going to have to sit out. <laughs> he can still win, but if Alligator he's Blood has to do it tough, yeah, if Alligator Blood had direct control of this race, I'd be all over him. But Mister Brightside gets run of the race. He's going to settle yep. in the one-one on the tail of Alligator Blood. Uh, the inevitable will be there as well. Mm -hmm. um, there are two runners I want to be on here, Vince. Two runners I want to be on. Five Victoria Road, who's going yep. to improve with the Winkers for the first time back to the miles. Yes. And six fangirl who's going to have last crack at them 
so I was confident yep. that the five and the six would actually be one of the winners in this race. I actually think Victoria Road's definitely worth a bet at 20 to 1. Mm. Uh, he wasn't well set up to run uh, up to his peak in that Cox Plate. He was still good. He was only beaten five lengths. Um, back to the mile, which is his pet distance. Gets the winkers for the first time. Barry I know it's a change of um, stable here for Victoria Road. Uh, yeah, with Mar Eustace now. Yeah, just the connection. Yeah. Well, it was um, in yeah, Danny O'Brien's so stable. and um... no, no, Aiden O'Brien. Aiden O'Brien. Oh, sorry. I, I beg, yeah. Sorry, wrong, wrong O'Brien. Aiden yeah. O'Brien, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Mar Eustace, Winker's first time back to the mile, I think could see him improve, and I think 20 to 1's over the odds. Um, mm. So, five and six for me here, Vince, very confidently. You? Yeah, well, look, I, you know, I'm a big alligator blood you fan, are. but it's, I oh, look, just think no point against just, him, but yeah, I'm not. No, I, 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 I hear everything you say, yep. And to win a race like this, I think he, I think he's got to have everything go for him because I think he's probably uh, Cox Plate Day. I felt like he's gotten everything out of himself for that yes. run. It, it yes. was a very brave third in the Cox Plate. Yep. Um, I just wonder whether some of these horses might be coming to the end of their preparation and um, and maybe just, you know, we'll let you down when you least expect it because they've had enough. And yeah. I just wonder whether Alligator Blood's had enough. It, it, it's um, a great argument. Great argument. Then again, yeah. then again, you know, whether it's the trainers or whether it's the owner wants to yeah. have another crack at this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Mr. Brightside was just a huge run in the Cox Plate. So mm. um, if, he's, if he's coiled up, Smothered, smothered on the fence again, ready for that uh, crack at them over the sixteen hundred this time. I think you'll be, um, I think you'll be ready to win. So, look, um, I'm going to try and tip with my head this time around. I'm actually going to yeah. tip Mr. Brightside to win yeah, this it's time. A, it's a fair point. It's a fair argument. Um, Gets and I hear what range. you say about Fangirl. So I'm tipping yep. Fangirl to come second. Alabla to go. Start again. Alabla <laughs> <Alabator laughs> blood to come third. <laughs> Um, and they're the three favourites in the race. But, you know, as you say, there's others there that have got um, yeah. fantastic each-way odds that are offering, such as Victoria Road, Pride of Jenny, uh, and even the Inevitable, all have uh, winning chances. Mm. Um, but at longer odds, I-, I just think the class normally rises to the top, the cream rises to the top. Mm-hmm. Um, so, look, this time, Mr Brightside for me, number one to beat... Six fangirl and two alligator blood. Yep, love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, I it's tough to be. It's a a lot of it's a from B from C. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that because that's what the market yeah, is. That's right. But like I said, for me, small bet number five and a good bet number six fangirl. Yeah, um, no, she's I like gonna have nice back of them and yeah. Um, yeah, I think she's going to enjoy a nice run behind the back of Mr. Brightside. So great race, I'll, cracking. I'll race. be very interested to see how Victoria beauty. Road goes in the new stable as well. So will I. Yeah, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Mm. Um, right. Okay, race eight, champion stakes, West Wind blows, favorite three bucks. Zaki's the second elect has been well back too. Uh, mm. mm. Five prowess, uh, smart winner last start at Mooney Valley over the Crystal Mile. It's six dollars a tissue, eight bucks. Duos is seven dollars. And that's it for the single figure runners. Uh, yep. I was I was against West Wind Blows here, Vince. Uh, mm-hmm. Just from a price perspective, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know. This... Oh, look, he's it's been a brave horse, horse, but it's also munched up a lot of money for people. Ha- that have been I, back I just yet. I don't mm. I, I just don't like twenty four hundred back to two thousand. It's not my it's Ideal not my thing. cup of tea. I don't like the drop down in distance. It's not my yeah, it's not my thing. Um, so I'm going to be against it at the quote, um, and yep. I'm going to be with uh, I'm going to be with two horses here. Yep. I'm going to be with Zaki. Yep. Uh, I think he's going to roll to the lead, and yep. because he's mapped positive, I'm going to be backing him. And he comes out of you know the best weight for age race in Australia, where he was so brave, he had to sit outside the lead. And oh, he was yeah. only beaten. He was only beaten one and a half lengths. Um, exactly. And I thought he was right. absolutely super. He's the number one in a weight for age horse. Yep. Um, he's he's the best performed horse in the race, and I'm going to be with him, and I'm going to be with the nine Dewars who had absolutely no luck in the Cox Plate, and she loves Flemington two thousand meters. So uh, I'm going to be with the one and the nine here, uh, mm-hmm. and I was against the eleven and the four. Uh, and the 10 who are all in the market at single figures. So one okay. and nine for me here, Vince, a two-horse play with Zaki and yep. Lewis. Yes, well, uh, I can understand that. And, um, 
yeah, I mean, I'm big. Fan, I'm a big fan of West Wind Blows as well. I thought it was a great yep. run in the Caulfield Cup, and um, I'm a big fan of Zaki and what uh, what he's been able to achieve as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but history is one thing. This is yes. uh, this is the future. So exactly, exactly. Which horses? Which which horses <laughs> are, are are better primed to win this particular race on this particular on. day? I do wonder about. I mean, are we expecting a fast track? Surely, with the weather yep. that we've had this yeah, week, yeah. it's got to be, be a, a fast track. track, doesn't it? Yeah, it'll be a good track. Yep. It won't be fast. No, it'll be a good track. It'll be well, it might be fast, but it'll it'll be a good three, good three or a good four. They'll water mm. the track. They'll water yeah. the track. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear your comment about uh, you know not being a fan of horses that go back from twenty four hundred to two thousand. Mm. Followers of Gold Trip will have noticed that uh, from the Caulfield Cup going into the Cox Plate, what yep. did he finish fifth? Yeah, he was yeah. coming home well, but yeah, maybe maybe that run wasn't necessary for his M- yep. Melbourne Cup preparation. Mm. Maybe like the uh, like the um, the connections of uh, of the eventual winner without a fight. Uh, they would have been better off to miss the Cox Plate with um, with Gold Trip and go straight well into the there. Melbourne yeah. Cup. Yeah. But um, that's what these people are doing with uh, West Wind Blows. They're taking it from a twenty four hundred meter race to a two thousand. So are Jewess, I suppose, in the same um, in the same sense. Yep. Um, I like Zaki. I, I just I I really love this horse. I think um, yep. he's been fantastic. But uh, he's also very, very capable of winning this race if he does get up on the pace like this. Uh, six, sorry, two thousand meters. Um, I think Dewis will be right up to its ears in it, and and it wouldn't surprise me to see Damien Oliver in um, in his last Group One uh, in a Spring Carnival uh, yeah, go ever g- get up yeah. uh, on this horse and um, right. and uh, finish off uh, you know in the way he probably deserves. Mm. But um, so. Maybe a little bit each way on Jewess uh, yeah. as well. You can probably back both these horses each way if yeah. you like both of them. So that's what I'll probably do. Numbers one and nine, uh, yeah. and I'll throw in um, I'll throw in number four for third. But um, yeah, there's no value in any of that. But uh, yeah. yeah, certainly one and one and nine are the ones I'll be on. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so we're following suit here. Uh, yeah, yeah Zark, like I said, Zaki's map positive. I think he'll lead, and yeah. I think he'll be very very hard to run down. So okay. Um, that's how I saw race eight. Uh, now, just other bets on the program. I'm not going to go through absolutely every other race, but um, race one, number nine, super keen. What a deal. The price has already been taken, so maybe wait till race day. Um, mm-hmm. Wait till a little bit closer to the race, and you might get a better price. This horse is flying. Uh, he's going to, but just been drawn drawn and set up, not in an ideal scenario with his last two runs. He drew wide at Sandown and had to go back to nearly last, but was really well back that day. And then... At Caulfield last start, drew wide on a day where you had to be up on the speed, and the, there, I think the, the barrier was in uh, the rail was in the fourteen meter position, which is just it's it's a disaster when you have to go back from that type of setup. Uh, yeah, and he flew home for fourth. Um, Jaws barrier seven, a middle pin at Flemington should blend in midfield, either three or two wide with cover, and he's going to be really hard to beat. The other one I didn't mind first up. Good each way, bet number 10, kind gesture. So race one, number nine, what a deal. Just wait to the day, but yeah. have a bit of kind gesture now because I think it's going to firm. So race one, number nine, and race one, number 10, both good bets. Um, and by the way, that's the same combination as, uh, as Zaki, isn't it? With it Jamie is, yep. Carr right it is, yep. For, uh, have, for Annabelle Nisham. They might have a double on the card. Uh, mm. Now, the the one or the nine, what a deal, has been switched over from Philip Stokes. So Philip Stokes... Um, no mm. longer trains a horse, and it's with Nisham. So I always like new trainer first up, which is um, yeah, which is a pearl of mine. Um, yep. And then the other bet I'm having, um, I'm having two plays in race number four. I'm backing. He's a shocker. Race four, number six, uh, and I'm backing race four, number eleven. So dazzling. So okay. race four, number six. He's a shocker. And yep. race four, number eleven. So dazzling both each way. Two so, horse play. Yep. Yep. So that'll be me at Flemington. So just nothing wrong with that. So long as one of them gets up, <laughs> exactly. Even if they run a drum, I'm happy. Um, and if the other one comes in second or third, well, you'll probably get your money we're back all happy. as well. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Um, so just to recap my bets at Flemington: race six, yep. number seven, in secret, and race yep. six, number three, very, very small each way, lofty strike. Um, race seven, the Champions Mile. I'm going to be backing Victoria Road and Fangirl. So race seven, number five, and race seven, number six. 
Yep. Race eight, which is the champion stakes. I'm going to be backing Zaki and Duas. So race eight, number one, and race eight, number nine. And yep. then we go back on the card, race one, number nine, what a deal, and race one, number 10, kind gesture. And then race four, I'm going to be on number six, he's a shocker, and number 11, so dazzling. So those are my bets on the program. If I had to pick an absolute best, yep. I would be going with uh, In Secret. In Secret. The Betty Imperatrice, yep. Race six, That's number perfect. seven. Yep. That's, All right. That's, that sounds yeah. terrific. Well, um, if I had to have a best bet, um, yep. it would be race seven, number one, Mr. Brightside. Love it. Love in it. In the Vince. Champions Mile. So um, that's the one I'm most confident about. Nice. I like that we're going against each other in that. It adds, uh, it adds to the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> opinions make markets mate opinions well the thing markets. is i jumped off I'll, prob I'll probably regret it and probably regret getting off alligator but i jumped off uh, without a fight i tipped it to come third in the melbourne cup behind vow and declare and gold trip because yep. i tipped this uh you know this nostalgic uh historical quinella. result where yeah. two melbourne <laughs> cup winners were going to quinella the race it didn't quite eventuate, eventuate that way but i did think vow and declare's run was pretty brave to finish yeah in the in the top ten of the um of the field after you know staying up on a what was a pretty hot pace up front it was yeah um, they, it was a, it was a pretty run. brave run I thought yeah, yeah brutally run cup but All right, um, yeah let's, um, always let's stuck, pay attention stick, stick with what worked for you exactly let's pay attention to some harness racing Vince let's get onto yep. Gloucester Park because that actually jumps tonight we're recording at quarter to five here in uh, Melbourne uh, yep. so we've got the WA Pacing Cup and the Norm Daughters Classic. We'll start with yeah. race five, shall we? It's a group one with 450K. Magnificent Storm uh, goes around the 250 favourites. Uh, yes. Its last run was against uh, Al Capone, <laughs> who went around <laughs> uh, Magnificent Storm, dollar five favourite. And one I hope our viewers uh, got an Al Capone for the place, which was my um, was very, very confident bet. bet. Yep. And yep. Um, it came through, it ran second. In fact, it ran out of its skin. It only did. It only finished up less than a length behind the um, behind yeah. the leader. So great run, um, really brave run. Great run, yeah. Um, all right, let's get into this, shall we? Magnificent Storm, right. favourite jumping Jack Max. There, Loyalist is there. Diego is there. They're all the runners in single figures outside of Prince of Pleasure. But all the all the horses that are drawn well in inverted yes. commas are all in single figures. So, um, and that's the Magnificent reason that they're in Storm, single figures. Yeah, Magnificent Storm, third up, should be ready to. Ready to peak. Um, he's on top for yeah. me, but um, yeah, you get no prizes. Two fifty, Vince. Yes, Paul. Uh, look, uh, the reason why numbers one, two, three, and four are in single figures, as well as number ten, which is drawn to follow the one out at Gloucester Park because there's yep. nine across the front. They're all in single figures purely on the fact that, that they're drawn well. Um, Hold on. Yep. And there's a lot of horses that are drawn five to nine on the front row. Mm -hmm. And even numbers 11 and 12, which would be far less than the figures that they are, uh, purely on the fact that they're drawn poorly. So draws are considered vitally important in harness racing. And, um, you know, I, I can't go against that because there have been so many examples of it, especially across the park, which is a very leader bias track. Mm. Um, now, look, Loyalist has come over to Western Australia and not exactly set the world on fire. Uh, it's pretty short at $5 and $1.60. I'm not. I'm not a fan of it because it I think it's taken too much of yet. a percentage up. I, I'm not a fan of it yet. I haven't seen yeah. it do anything. Now it's yeah. drawn, it's got the best draw. Yeah, sure. Mm. And it'll probably take a sit behind Magnificent Storm if it has to, mm. uh, unless Jumping Jack Mac comes across first. And that's what I think is going to happen. Yep. I, I have a feeling that the reason Magnificent Storm is $2.50 is because um, the punters know that Jumping Jack Mac. Will more than likely cross the one in, in right. and he's drawn number two. So yep. I'm expecting Stuart McDonald to go forward with this Gary Hall senior trained um, pacer and be very, very hard to beat from the pole. Magnificent okay. Storm may very well have to do this in the death yep. uh, over the 2,536. So while he is what you'd consider the best horse in the race with very good form going into it. I don't think he's an absolute sure thing if he's got to do it from the death. Yep. I think that what might happen here is that the Gary Hall senior stable will say, well, Stewie, you go ahead and take the lead from the one. So I think the one's not a bad bet for the place, but I don't, I don't have any confidence in it to win. Okay. Um, and I think that will set it up for um, Prince of Pleasure on with Gary Hall Jr. to, um, to eventually get out from that um, three back the inside position. 
which he's always been able to do. Don't know why, mm-hmm. but he's brilliant at getting off the fa- off the fence. Mm-hmm. Um, look, there's also a big contingent of Greg Bond trained runners here, being number five Minstrel, number seven Tenzing Bromac, which I've got a lot of time for this horse. Number eight himself, which when he's drawn well, often finishes in the placings. He's drawn way out in number eight yeah, near, near the yeah, car park. But, mm. And same with Monty Ronaldo, really good horse, but drawn out near the car park. Yeah. That's why you're getting 60 to 1, 80 to 1 on some of these horses. Still the show number 11 is a, is another interesting one that's in the Greg, Greg Bond stable that will probably follow out uh, Jumping Jack Mack and get to the death initially. But I do think right. it'll get cover. It'll get cover because Magnificent Storm will come around and take the death off number 11. So I think it'll be a really interesting map race. I'm expecting um, um, a lot of pace on to start okay. with. Yep. And um, I think that um, uh, tens, sorry, uh, Magnificent Storm will certainly keep, it, keep the pace hot up front. I expect the swooper to come all over the top of this. Okay. And um, and I think it'll be from the Greg Bond stable. Mm-hmm. And I'm going for number seven, Tenzing Bromac. Okay. At Bit of really here, healthy each it. way odds. Got a lot of time for this horse. Love it. At $15 and $3.40. And even though he's drawn seven, you'll notice that he's not exactly blown out to 60 and 80 to one. Yep. And that's because the market's got a lot of respect for this horse. The other one, if you want to have a, a punt on something at really long odds, it's been in great form. And I noticed that Richard Bell, the race caller, has tipped it to win the race. Number six, Valentine's Brook. Wow. And it's currently Sheesh. paying $71 for the win and $11 for the place. Okay. So don't be surprised if this race has, you know, five, six, seven horses all coming from behind and um, and swooping down the outside. So, um I think it'll be number seven, Tenzing Bromac. Yep. To beat. Uh, I've, put, I've put in uh, number 11 here, uh, yep. Steal the Show, mm-hmm. uh, which I think will also get a soft run, driven by Denny Roberts. So I'm, I'm tipping a, a Greg Bond uh, Quinella, Quinella here. Yep. Um, jumping Jack Mack, I think, will hold on for third. Mm-hmm. And. Um, I think when it's all probably a bit late, number 10 will eventually get off the fence and number 10, Prince of Pleasure, to come okay. fourth, driven by Gary Hall Jr. So my numbers there will be 7, 11, 1, and 10. And maybe a little bit on number 6 because it'll it'll probably be in the finish because it's in really good form, number 6, Valentine's right. Brook. So um, if I was going to have a... Um, um, a bet in the race, I'd be I'd be going wide, uh, okay. as wide as possible right. with your with your trifectas and your first fours. But Beautiful. um, my my bet will be each way on numbers seven and eleven. Okay, each Perfect. way on both. Perfect. Currently, you're currently Perfect. getting fifteen dollars and three dollars forty on Tenzing Bromac, and nineteen dollars and four dollars on the fixed odds market for Steal the Show. All right, beautiful. So something each way on those runners, bit of value yep. there. Uh, yep. Let's go to race number six. Uh, yep. Wonderful to fly. Dollar twenty-two favorite. I looked at the form, saw her, saw the map, mm. and I doubt anything will beat her. But it's just dollar twenty-two. So well, Richard Bell thinks that the ten will beat it from behind and its back, right behind its back, beyond the sea, uh, to be driven by Kyle Harper. Yep. For. Uh, uh, for Matt Lindor, I think you'll find that um, this horse will get the smother behind the one all the way. What I doubt, what I wonder about is what's going to take on number one and and put it to the sword. I, I, I'm really not too sure what's going to um, what's going to put the pace into the race here. Mm. Uh, this is a group two. Um, it's a it's a big race, and I think Wonderful to Fly should win. Uh, it's a dollar twenty-two. It's short enough, so leave me out. I'm not going to back that at dollar twenty-two, but uh, there are some each way bets here that I think may be worth having because um, I think that they could be they could be uh, at least in the finish. Numbers two, American Armor, and number four, Born to Boogie. Um, I think are worth a uh, a little flutter. Cyclone Charlotte last time was an odds-on favourite. And um, 
I thought it would uh, I thought it would uh, win that race that uh, came second in last start, but just ran out of puff. Mm-hmm. What didn't like doing it tough this time, draw nine. You're not going to do it any tougher than drawing nine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it could it could it could put egg on my face, but I don't think it's going to be the winner of this race. Um, so I think it's just drawn a bit too far uh, away to be a contender in this. But um, look, it is a capable horse. There's no doubt about that. Okay. But I look, I do think that beyond the sea, you'd be better off backing beyond the sea for the place than backing wonderful to fly for the win. Because even for the place, you can get a dollar forty on fixed odds right now. Yeah. And number one, wonderful yep. to fly is a dollar twenty two to win. Yeah, exactly. And you so, know you know the ten's gonna follow the one into the race the whole way and yeah, it's as simple as yeah. that, really. So if you want a sure bet, you'd be backing number ten for the place yep. on fixed odds or on the yep. tote. Um, I think if you want some value. Uh, you'll get something from numbers two and four, American Armour and four, Beautiful. Born to Boogie. Beautiful. All right, there we go. Um, so that's the Norm Daughters Classic. That's Gloucester Park done and dusted for yep. tonight. Uh, yep. We'll skip along to Albion Park and then Addington very quickly. Uh, yep. So Leap to Fame comes up as the dollar twenty-eight favourite in the Queensland Cup. He was brutally unlucky uh, last mm. weekend as a dollar sixty-five favourite. Uh, he's drawn a bit better here. Uh, drawn to be off the uh, fence and yes, uh, yeah, should be winning. I think it's pretty simple. Should be winning. Should be winning. Um, last last week's winner drew the pole. Future steward has drawn ten this time, and I notice yep. is is eight dollars and a dollar ninety five on the uh, TAB fixed odds market. Uh, you know, this is where the the draw makes all the difference, doesn't it? Correct. This, this time, I think Leap to Fame will go forward uh, and probably take the lead. What yeah. I think might happen here is that Peter McMullen, who's the best driver in Queensland by a mile, um, will go forward with Blacks a Dance. Yep. And I think we'll probably take the lead off the two inside of it. Uh, so the three will initially get the lead and probably then hand up to Leap to Fame and follow it. So um, that's what I think will happen uh, in this race. But I don't think it'll be quite good enough to to beat Leap to Fame if Leap to Fame's got the lead. So um, it'll be a chance. It'll be mm-hmm. looking to do um, um, the old, um, you know, I'll take a smother behind your back and come down the sprint lane and, and beat you uh, type trick, but it doesn't yep. always work. But I no. do think that that's um, probably the best tactics for, for Black Sedans. Yep. So my, my numbers here are five, Leap to Fame, to beat three, Black Sedans. And if you wanted to have a bet each way, that's the one to go for. Okay, um, And number 10, Future Assured. And if you want one at really longer odds that um, could play a part in the finish, number 12, can't believe the odds on this at the moment, turn it up, Shane Graham's horse, $41 and $6 the place. Yeah, well, <laughs> if, if you if you like to have um, a little flutter on something at longer odds, that's a roughie that shouldn't be a roughie. It's only okay. a roughie because of its draw, not, yep. because of its, not because of its ability. Okay. Love it. Absolutely love it. I had Leap to Fame on top, and I don't think anything will beat him. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how I saw that race anyway. I'm not betting in it. Um, let's move on to the Forever Gold Mares. This is a nice little race. Uptown Beach Girl, she was dominant first up against uh, Holy Stars. She won by six and a half metres. Dollar yep. thirty-five. Anna Love, draw nicely, drawn the inside. It's $3.20. I think it's a race in two. The market's saying that. Um, yep. Holy Stars had the fitness edge on Uptown Beach Girl last start, but Uptown Beach Girl showed her up and I yep. really don't see anything changing here, to be honest, Vince. Uh, five from one from six. Maybe a trifecta yep. straight out. That could be the way to go. Well, that's probably the way to go. Um, although <laughs> it's amazing how races never quite turn out the way no, you think know, they, logi- the, the way case, they logically it? should, Paul. <laughs> Very um, true. Otherwise, everyone would win. Um, oh, exactly. So, look, um, again, I think uh, you're right here. Uptown Beach Girl. Nathan Dawson should take it up towards the front, even if it doesn't get the front. Uh, it's only sixteen hundred and sixty. It's a, it's basically a sprint over the mile, just over the mile for the mares. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was none better mare in recent times than Forever Gold, that's for sure. So this race named after her, um, and I think it's deserving of a of a champion to win it. So number five, Uptown Beach Girl. I agree with you. Um, Probably to beat the one and a love is going to have all the favours from the from the draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, six Holly Stars and eight drawn to follow out the one might as well. Uh, is in pretty good form, pretty good uh, 
form you know, gets into the placings uh, more often than it doesn't, and that's probably a nice little each way bet if you want something at longer odds. Love it. Could could sneak in for third, something like that. Number eight might as well. Currently paying twenty six dollars for the win, two sixty for the place. Beautiful. All right, All perfect. Right? All right. So that's Albion Park out the way. So those are the bets that we've got there and selections we've got there. Um, yep. The final little bit we're going to go to is we're going to mm-hmm. venture over across the Tasman too, uh, because Tuesday next week, I know it's a little while away, um, yep. but uh, Tuesday we've got the running of the size stakes final, which is actually going to be a cracking race doing this race uh, just before the the map and the way that this could play out is very, very intriguing. So let's get into race nine at Addington on Tuesday. So the favourite here is Cold Chisel, drawn 12. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've got Bessem, drawn 7, 480. We've got La Major, drawn 6 at 550. We Walk by Faith, $6.50. And Chase a Dream is drawn 15. It's $3.70. So they all sort of tie into each other, these horses. Very, very interesting. Now, Vince... I was very keen on the seven here, Vessem. Um, now, it started a $1.60 favourite behind Cole Chisel last start, uh, and now yep. we're getting $4.80. I know he's drawn back out wide uh, with, yep. with uh, number seven, but um, I thought he was just an auto bet here, given the price he is for this. I can't race. believe, I can't believe the price that he is. But there's no the driver notified, is. so is that a bit of an issue? Well, it's funny that Mark and Nathan Purden have yes. three runners in this race, and none of them have got a driver nominated. So okay. I think they're pl- – actually, I should say that there's four. The mm. only one that they have got nominated is number two, Yep, uh, Devin Van Til, yep. who's the driver of this race, who yep. I've never heard of before, to be honest. Yep. <laughs> um, so it's, it'll be very, very interesting to see uh, who they put on. Now, I noticed that one of the – well, probably the best driver in New Zealand is Blair Orange, the freak yes, man. The freak. And he hasn't yep. got a he hasn't got a drive yet. So I dare say that they've been using him as their main driver lately. Yes. Uh, he will probably be on either Vessum, in my opinion, or Chase yep. a Dream number fifteen. That could be the lead, couldn't it? That and that could, could be, the, be lead. the lead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So whoever he goes on to is probably the one you'd be most confident in. But I, I I think you've still got to look at the ability of the horse, the draw the draw that it's got, etc. Um, you know, the driver makes some difference, but it doesn't make all the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to think that uh, seven is drawn a lot better than the fifteen, and therefore um, is probably the one to go on. And you might even get each way odds here by the time they they Could uh, very well, yeah. They, they absolutely um, they let them go. Um, chase a dream. Great form, but drawn right out the back there. So I, you know, it's got a lot of work to do to win mm. this race, and that's why you're getting three dollars seventy. Yeah. So I, I agree. My numbers here are seven, fifteen. I do think it'll be a um, a Mark Purden yep. um, double, mm-hmm. and uh, number twelve Cold Chisel, which is also in great form, to come third, and um, probably We Walk by Faith number two to come in fourth. So I'm, I'm tipping for the. Um, um, the Purden stable to be very, very heavily involved in the finish yeah. in this race. The market's yeah. saying that as well, and that's understandable yeah. too. Yeah, I was with Besson, but I just want to see who the driver is. If the driver's Blair Orange, um, yeah. I'll definitely be keen to have a bet on. Uh, definitely well, well, if he's if he's going to go on to fifteen, he must have a lot of faith in that horse. Of so, course, yeah, absolutely, and, and that's why I'm saying if he does go on to fifteen, you might want to think about whether you want to, you know, jump on him because yeah. he's chosen that horse, but. Of course. I still think, you know, if you put the same driver on both horses, I think vessen has got the draw to yeah. win. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good, beautiful. Uh, now let's get on to the last race we're going to cover for this episode anyway. Uh, yep. This is going to be an absolute cracker, the New Zealand Trotting Cup pace. Now explain the weird scenario with this race, Vince. This <laughs> just, it, flags, it really just confuses me. Well, look, this is the biggest day in New Zealand harness racing, obviously, and it's actually considered bigger than the thoroughbreds. That's how big it is wow. in New Zealand. This okay. sport in New Zealand is huge. Holy moly. Um, it's always the second Tuesday in November, so it's always yep. the, exactly one week after Melbourne Cup. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, the entire week is amazing. If, you, if you're going to have a week in New Zealand and you're a, and you're a horse person uh, or, you know, or a punting person, uh, go to New Zealand during this week because um, you've got New Zealand Trotting Cup Day on the Tuesday. You've got the Greyhounds Cup, I think, on the... 
Wednesday night. Right. And then you've got the New Zealand free for all day, which is also combined with the Dominion Trot, the biggest trot race in New Zealand on the Friday. And then you've got the thoroughbreds again on the Saturday for the New Zealand, New Zealand Cup thoroughbreds. So it's just a massive week in New Zealand. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the Tuesday is a public holiday there as well, being the New Zealand Trotting Cup Day. Now, why is it called the New Zealand Trotting Cup when it's actually a pace? I'm not sure. Probably because <laughs> everyone's always called it, you know, trotting. This is, you know, we yeah. go to the trots. Yeah. But it yeah. really should be renamed, in my opinion, the New Zealand Pacing Cup. But anyway, they call it the Trotting Cup, yep. even, if, even though it is for paces. Us. Maybe maybe someone can give us a history lesson on it. <laughs> maybe they can. Maybe yeah. they can. I, they, they're better than me. I'm not sure of the history of it. But it is a standing start race over 3,200 metres, so it's the same distance as the Melbourne Cup. Yep. Um, and all of the horses start from the stand, and and, uh, and they're all starting from scratch. So um, what you've got here is um, a certain amount of horses across the front. Uh, I'm yeah. not 100% sure how many they have across the front. I think it's, I think it's at least eight. It could even be okay. nine or ten. Right, and then you've got another, you know, half a dozen on the back row. So, um, so even though they're all off scratch, some of them will start behind the front row. Mm. Uh, and what's interesting here is that the two favourites in this race, uh, which are very, very close in the betting, are both yep. drawn on the second line. So it really does make the race mm -hmm. very interesting, very competitive. And there are other horses that could very well win. Yes, and. Uh, I noticed that Mark Purden himself has this time chosen to drive and he's gotten onto his champion uh, champion four-year-old gelding Akuta here, which won the freak. Kaikoura Pacing Cup yep. last time. Yep. And, of course, the um, the Ashburton Stakes the week before. You're getting $2.40 on the fixed odds market. I, I assure you that you're only getting that because of the draw. Yep. Swayze is the Australian Raider. This is the horse that knocked everyone over in the um, in the Queensland Pacing Championships early, earlier this year in July um, over there in uh, at Albion Park. Yeah, defeated and, Leap to um, Fame. And, yeah, knocked over Leap to Fame mm -hmm. and uh, has taken all before it and has, uh, obviously the, the connections and trainer Jason Grimson have decided to go over to New Zealand and contest this massive race. It's worth $750,000 in, in total prize money. Uh, Cameron Hart's going over there to drive it. Uh, so it really should put up a fantastic performance. Yep. And I think it'll be right up to it in its ear. Well, both of these horses should be uh, in the race up to their ears. Uh -huh. um, there's one here at uh, really solid each way odds that I also think, in fact, there's two of them, I think that'll be right in the finish in this race as well. And that's number three, Republican Party, which Completely Blair agreed, Orange yeah. is actually driving yeah. for Cran Del Getty. Completely agree good, with you. Good, healthy each way odds here, eight fifty yep. and two dollars forty. And the other one is number nine, Old Town Road, yep. which um, Zach Butcher is driving for Josh Dickey, who's had a bit of a stint here in, in Australia for a little while and is heading mm -hmm. back now. Um, I think those two horses got every chance of finishing in the finish here. I completely um, agree. But I also think that Swazi and Akuta will be contesting the finish as well. So um, I'm ex I'm actually going to tip number three, Republican Party, yep. to beat number 13, Swayze. I don't think he's going over there for nothing. I think he's going to be primed for this race. Um, number 15, Akuta, and number nine, Old Town Road, who, if you recall, la at last year's Summer Carnival came over to Australia and performed pretty well as well in the um, in the Hutter Cup. Mm -hmm. So they're the four best horses in the race, in my view. There are other horses that can easily be competitive, such as Krug, number four, which is also very healthy, healthy each way odds for the Crandall Getty Stable. Uh, number five, Beach Ball, has done not a lot wrong. Is also the same odds as Krug. And, um, and I really think that that's probably about it. BD Joe... Hasn't been in great form. Uh, also drawn poorly. I don't think it'll be in the finish. So I think that they're your main players uh, in the in the top half dozen. So number three, Republican Party. Four, Krug. Five, Beach Ball. Uh, nine, Old Town Road. 
13 Swayze and 15 Akuta. They're the ones, if you want to box them into a first four or something like that, uh, I, I think you'll get your first four if you box those horses. Okay, beautiful. Um, yeah, I was super keen Republican Party here, Vince. Uh, mm. I know he doesn't have SP advantage over Akuda, but um, he's only he's, he defeated Akuda um, three starts ago and finished Correct. really close to him um, two starts ago as well over the 2,400 metres at Ashburton. So yep. um, I'm, I'm pretty keen uh, here, number yep. three, each way, like a one by three. One unit the win, three units the place. So yep. that, that's the way I'll be playing this. And yep. I, my numbers were almost identical to yours, Vince. So I had three on top yep. from 15, from 13, yep. from nine. So there you no, go. Same four numbers. numbers. Yep. So Republican Party for me, a good each way bet uh, yep. in the 11th here at uh, Addington, the New Zealand Trotting Cup. Um, we're done and dusted, sir. Uh, it's been a pleasure, but um, absolutely, this is going to be a, this, this is going to be a cracking weekend, uh, and it, then it's all topped off on the Tuesday as well. So yeah, exactly. Uh, last day of the Flemington Carnival on Saturday. It's going to be an absolute cracker, uh, yep. and then we move on next week to Thousand Guineas Day and Sir Rupert Clark Stakes Indeed. Day as well. So that's been shifted to the back end of the carnival, and uh, then the WA. Ho- hopefully, with this um, with this big day on the Friday next week. Uh, at Addington as well with the Dominion Trot and the um, the New Zealand Free for All. Hopefully we can uh, do this show on the Thursday with any luck, or or maybe very early on the Friday and get it up uh, on YouTube so that um, yep. we can give you some tips for that program as well. Hopefully, absolutely. Uh, fingers crossed we can find some winners too. In the meantime, that's always not <laughs> yeah. Well, that helps. The, the luck the luck will eventually sway my way eventually with these unlucky runners and photo finishes. Indeed. The nature of the beast, my friend. You're back at me. Exactly today. right. They run second or third. You still get a collect. But uh, again, that's that's the punt, mate. Uh, we yep. love it. We hate it at the same time. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, subscribe, comment, uh, and make sure you leave some chats in the live chat as well as this goes on. So we'll have this up tonight. And uh, follow me on Twitter as well at Paolo Seb zero five P A O L O S E B zero five. Vince, you can follow him on Twitter as well. And and the, yep. and the rest. So um, like, subscribe, comment on the Jumper Punch, and uh, we'll be back to do it all again next week. Hopefully we can find some winners for you on the weekend as well. So uh, we'll chat very soon, Vince. We'll be back next week, mate. Great, Paul. Look forward Happy to Happy punning. It. You Cheers, too, mate. mate. Cheers. Yeah.